Hey guys, it's Wahima, but just call me Wah. Melanated! So welcome to another episode of Morning Tea, where I sip on tea and talk about current events and social issues. Today's tea is Tetley British Tea. I feel like it's like British Lipton's tea, but I feel like the Brits do tea better. So even if Tetley is a basic tea like Lipton's, it's still going to be a little bit better, a little bit robust. All right, here's the tea. I want to talk about Monique. I know this is like beating a dead horse with a stick, but I feel like I have to wrap it up and say this last bit of piece about Monique. So as you guys know, last week she was on The Breakfast Club, or maybe even two weeks ago, she was on The Breakfast Club, and she wanted an apology from Charlemagne. She wanted to know how a respectful gentleman who she had met 10 years ago could then turn her into the donkey of the day. You're either in one of three camps. One, you don't care about this situation at all. Two, you're pro-Monique or you're against Monique. I find that I am a little bit of both. As a black woman, as a black woman who's trying to break into the entertainment industry, I can understand and agree with her point of view to a certain extent. I think for me, where the issue came is asking for a Netflix boycott. I think that was just a little bit of an overreach. You know, she did deserve more than $500,000. We absolutely agree with that. Like $500,000 and her not being able to work anywhere for two years is like a slap in the face. Like how can she sustain herself on on $500,000 and not work for two years? Like we don't know what Monique's money is like. We don't know how many people she's taken care of for that to be an offer put on the table was a little bit disrespectful. Now, there, the Breakfast Club is saying that she was able to make a counter offer, and why didn't she make a counter offer? And, or they made the counter offer, Netflix made it seem like they were going to accept it, and then just did not respond to them after that. So where I felt that it was the overreach was her asking for a Netflix boycott, girl. There are other people who are making their money and doing their thing on Netflix, and for Monique to ask for a Netflix boycott is just a little, like, ma'am to me we get it there's a lot of disrespect to black women in the industry and i do think and applaud monique for standing up for that now it's still hearsay whether or not she is as difficult as everyone makes it out to be she claims that she's not difficult that she's just asking for things that wouldn't be an issue if someone else were to ask another woman of another color or even a man were to ask that there wouldn't be an issue and that she's that she has been deemed difficult to work with monique might not have been as aware of her behavior as the rest of the cast was aware of her behavior. So maybe Monique is not thinking that she's being um, a little extra and disrespectful to those around her, but there are people around her, Black people, who feel like she is being extra and disrespectful. So who's to say? And I thought that her husband brought up a really great point. He made an analogy, and I don't think the analogy is quite even, but it drove home a point to me. He made an analogy about the women who choose to come forward dealing with sexual harassment um, in the entertainment industry and how there are some women who have to weigh the choice of coming forward and what that might do to their career versus not coming forward and just taking it. When he made the choice to step out and speak on what's happening in the industry and it backfired on her. If she was really sticking up for Black people and women being disrespected by producers and directors and and PAs and whatnot, then I applaud that. And I think it sucks that she has gotten a bad rap due to her standing up for those causes. But at the same time, I do think that she needs to protect herself and her image. I want her to make all the money she can make. And if making all the money she can make means that she doesn't sweat other people's fever, then I'm fine with her not sweating other people's fevers. You feel me? So, I mean, that's really all I have to say about that subject. Let me know what you guys think down below. All right, let's move on to our next topic. Here's the tea. Okay, so the Parkland shooting. Columbine, Sandy Hook, Virginia Tech. You know, even in the San Bernardino area, we had that gunman last year who went into an elementary school and shot his estranged ex-wife or estranged wife who was a teacher. And then those kids who were traumatized from that situation. I just think there is something happening in this country. And I honestly don't know what the answer is. I don't know if it's gun control. I don't know if it's more mental health issues. I don't know if it's the way we're socializing our men to behave. It's really disconcerting. And it's like, why? Why now all of a sudden? and everybody wants to walk into public places and shoot shoot children that's the thing that makes me like the it's like it's nothing sacred while i was on instagram i'm on instagram a lot these days i saw this meme or this like thing and it says why don't black kids shoot up schools and then it has like a little like emoji thing i'll, I'll put it on the screen if um if i find it and it's like because our parents will walk in that school and say our full government name be like bring your narrow black 
here. You got me effed up if you finna have me all over the news. Like I never raised Joe, da 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 da. Like even that. Like what black parent talks to their kids like that? And if so, you're a bad black parent. Put that MF and gun down, walk. Like, I mean, I can't even read the rest of it because it's just so dehumanizing. A tragedy happened and somebody made a meme talking about how a black parent would handle this situation if that was their child with a gun. As though all scenarios are just so perfect and once they realize that their child has a gun, they're just gonna march up to the school and tear their kid a new one. Have me over the news like I never raised your That's right. Put that MF and gun down. Walk your ass out this door and don't you ever think of some shit like this again. Oh yeah, and since you feel like you're gonna sue some shit up, I'm finna shoot this MF and belt across your ass. Like, it's just tacky. It's just so dehumanizing to the parents who are going through the struggles of dealing with this. It doesn't matter the ethnicity of the person who did this. This thing happened and it's like a situation that's happening in our country and we need to do something about it. And to make it like a black person wouldn't do this, that black man went into an elementary school in San Bernardino and shot his estranged wife in front of a bunch of kids. An elementary school. So black people do do these things. They're not immune to this callous, terrible behavior. I don't know, I can't even really explain the kind of behavior and what must go through your mind to think that this kind of behavior is appropriate at all. But to dehumanize and demean what happened by putting this meme around is just so... I mean, I guess some people feel like they have to laugh, but like, that was just so uncouth. The person who made the meme just has... I don't think really understands the gravity of what is going on in this country or may not have kids or is just trying to think of a funny way to get through it because it is so shocking but I do think that that meme is uncouth and I just wanted to like implore you guys like when situations like this happen around our country we got to stop thinking about it being an ethnicity thing now it is when it comes to the charges and the consequences of this behavior and like why is it only a super certain group of people yes Right, that is valid, but dehumanizing it and demeaning it and being uncouth with something like that, it's just not good for anyone, you know? Because then we get complacent and we don't think about like who this might be affected, who could be the next person. We we devalue the situation and I don't think that we should do that. That's just my two cents on that. Okay, let's move on to our next topic. Here's the tea. Safari and his picture. Now, I'm going to speak as though Safari did not leak his own nudes, okay? Because he states he didn't, so I'm going to take his word at it. As a feminist, the fact that those nudes were leaked and all of these women came out of the woodworks to DM him and put all these disgusting things on Twitter and Instagram is abhorrent and flooring to me. If this were a woman, if he were a woman and that had happened, had men come to Twitter and done all those things, every woman in America would be absolutely disgusted. Yet, now that it has happened and the shoe's on the other foot, all of the disgusting women have just come out of the woodworks. And it is just so abhorrent to me. Like, a man's nudes were leaked of his personal private bits. And no matter how much you find his private bits to be pleasing to your eyes, like it is inappropriate for us to go on this tirade. And the fact that he's just expected to be okay with it, like had he come out, which he isn't, he's saying that, you know, he didn't do this. He has nieces and mothers and grandparents and all these people out there who watch him and follow him. And for this to leak is embarrassing for him. And he's just going to try to take the punches and keep it rolling. But I don't think he should have to. I think whoever leaked this should be brought up on charges the same way it would be if it were revenge porn. Like, this is unacceptable. We shouldn't accept this from any gender. No one should be putting out nudes of anyone, regardless of gender, um, size, body type, any of that. No one should ever do that. And I think the response of it is just so tacky. And as a black woman, I feel like we shouldn't do that. I feel like as a black woman, I wouldn't want any black man to be treated like that. Come on, guys, we got to do better. DMing him, I watched his interview on The Breakfast Club and he and they're making all kinds of jokes and windows. And I mean, the first like, I feel like the first 20 minutes of that interview was just like me cringing because I'm just like, let the man talk about his his next single let him talk about the issue and then just move on they kept bringing it up anytime he used a word they did innuendo with it which okay that's fine if we all know that he actually did it but the fact is that he's saying he's he didn't so let's be just let's be respectful i don't know just how i feel 
I always think about myself and how I feel in that situation. I don't think anyone deserves to have their nudes leaked, no matter if they took the picture or not. They're like, why did you take the picture? He's like, I took it on Snapchat. I didn't send it to anybody. He's like, I don't know if somebody get into my cloud and got it. And they're like, why would you take it in the first place? I'm like, maybe he was feeling himself. You know, like he was like, I was trying to take a picture of my V and like da 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 da. And I'm just like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You could take a nude of yourself and that doesn't mean that anyone has to send it about. That's disgusting. And then for us, our response to not be outraged the way we would feel if it were a woman is an, is another layer of disgusting. I know that Twitter is a trash place where trash people are trashy all the time, but like, come on. Come on, guys. <sighs> all right, that is it for this episode of Morning Tea, you guys. Let me know what you guys think of these topics down below. Let me know if there's something that you did want me to talk about and I didn't talk about and you're discouraged that I didn't talk about it. I'm gonna try to keep Morning Tea a little bit more light. That, like I said, in Morning Tea 99, I'm gonna try to change it up a bit, talk about more pop culture -y things because I don't wanna like inundate you guys with all this information and you don't wanna watch. I want you to watch, you know what I'm saying? I want my audience to who watches my reality TV to watch my Morning Tea to watch my comedy. We wanna build this channel and thrive and grow. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember to be you, be true, and find your place. Bye.